Now let's go for the calculation of the sample size for various powers and to understand the relationship between power, sample size and the difference we can detect in this example. I'm going to demonstrate this power and sample size calculation in Minitab as well as Sigma Excel. Hello friends, welcome back. Today's topic is very important as we are going for the data collection as well as analysis of it. The topic is power and sample size. I am going to explain this power and sample size with the help of practical example for one of the statistical tool. I am sure with this tool you will be having the complete clarity about power and sample size. So let's begin. Before to understand the relationship between power and sample size and one more important metric, I am going to explain what are the basic definitions because it's very important to understand what is a power, what is a sample size so that we can understand the latter part very easily. So let's start with the definitions. The first one is what is a population, sample and sample size. If you talk about the population, population is nothing but the entire set of atoms or in other words we can say the entire set of atoms is called as a population. Whereas if you take the small number of atoms from this population to make a judgment of the population, it is called as a sample. Let's take an example. If we take one, two and three apples from this entire population, then we can say it as a sample size. The number of samples taken to make the judgment is called as a sample size. In this example, we can say this is a sample of sample size three. Now let's understand the relationship between population and sample. To make a judgment about the population, what we are doing? We are collecting the random samples from that population. We are doing some mathematical calculations on that to see whether it is meeting the acceptance criteria or not. If the sample is meeting the acceptance criteria, then no action is required and we can take the entire data for the production or for the next step. But if the sample is not meeting the acceptance criteria, then we need to take the actions. Either we need to go for the rework, reject or any subsequent actions as per the control plan. So in this procedure, we can see based on the sample, we are going to take the decision about the population. This is very important because in real life, it is not possible to check the entire population. Right now, let's go for the second definition, which is the power of the test. The probability of rejecting the null hypothesis correctly is equal to one minus beta. Now, before to understand this power and confidence level, you must have the understanding of hypothesis testing. But don't worry about it at this point of time. If you are not having the awareness about what is the null hypothesis and what is alternative hypothesis, just remember the definitions that I am going to tell you now. This value of 1 minus beta is called as a power of the test. Here, beta is nothing but the consumer risk, also called as a type 2 error. So we can say that the probability of not committing a type 2 error is called as a power of the test. For example, let's say if beta is equal to 0.1, then power of the test will be equal to 100 into 1 minus 0.1, which is equal to 90 percentage. There is a strong relationship between power and sample size that I'm going to demonstrate with the help of practical example to you. But before that, let's understand what are the general guidelines for these sample sizes. On this slide, we can see there is a list of some statistical charts and what is the recommended minimum sample size. In case of histogram, also called as a frequency distribution diagram, we must have at least sample size of 50 for meaningful conclusions. In case of Pareto chart, it is similar to that of the histogram. We should have at least 50 sample size. In case of scatter plot or control chart, we should have at least 24 sample size for meaningful and effective conclusions from the data. We can also plot these statistical charts with the lesser sample size than the recommendation, but the results will not be reliable. Now let's go for an example to calculate the sample size based on the power and differences. Power and sample size example for one sample t-test. So we are going to take one statistical tool that is a one sample t-test to understand how the power and sample size are calculated and what is the relationship between them. To examine the relationship between power, sample size and the difference you can detect when you want to compare the mean of the population to a target or reference value, we are going to use power and sample size for one sample t-test. Here we need to note a one important point that 
there is a significant relationship between the power, sample size and the difference that we can detect. In this example, we can simply say that with the sample size of 5, which is indicated by the plane line, we can see we can detect the difference of 3, but we are having the power of that decision is about 0.9. As we are going to increase the sample size from 5 to 6, indicated by the dotted line, we can see to detect that same difference of 3, we will be having the power which is close to 0.99. So we can see just increasing the sample size, we are going to increase the power of the test. So there is a significant relationship between power and sample size. Now let's go for the example and let's understand that in more detail. Here is an example. An economics wants to determine whether the monthly energy cost for families had changed from the previous year when the mean cost per month was $200. Before collecting the data for a one sample t-test, the economics uses the power and sample size calculation to determine how large the sample must be to obtain a power of 90%. Here we can see the beta is 0.1. In this example, we got the first metric, which is the power. We need a power of 90%. Any difference of at least $100 in either direction is considered to be meaningful and the estimated standard deviation is $150. So here we got the second metric, which is difference that is $100 and the standard deviation required is 150. Now let's go for the calculation of the sample size for various powers and to understand the relationship between power, sample size and the difference we can detect in this example. I'm going to demonstrate this power and sample size calculation in Minitab as well as Sigma Excel. Let's do that in Minitab first. Here is a data for energy mentioned in dollars and we can see there are 15 number of observations. Now, as we are going to calculate the power and sample size, please follow the procedure. Go to the stat. After that, we need to select the option for power and sample size. Power and sample size formulas are different for different statistical tools. In case of the one sample t-test, we are going to use this one sample t-test under power and sample size to understand what is the power and sample size formulas for this example. As we are going to use this one sample t-test, we can also see what is the message coming there. Examine the relationship between power, sample size and the difference for a one sample t-test. So select this option. So this window will be open for power and sample size for one sample t-test. As we are going to calculate the sample size, so we can keep this entity as a blank. We can put what is the difference that we are going to detect. In this example, we can see the difference that we are going to detect is a hundred dollars on either side so we need to mention that here in power values as we are interested in 90 percentage of the power so please mention it as 0.9 and if you want to also calculate what is the sample size for different powers that we can also mention here let's say we want to calculate the sample size for the 80 percentage of the power 85 percentage of the power and let's say 95 percentage of the power as well as 99 percentage of the power so we can get the different sample sizes for each of these power values to detect the difference of $100. We can also mention what is the standard deviation in this example. If we are having that, we can put here. In this example, as we are mentioned, we are having the standard deviation of 150. So we can mention that here. In options, we need to mention what is the alternative hypothesis. As we are looking for both the directions, so we can select this default option of not equal and we can mention what is the significance level. The significance level here is a 0 0.05 that is a default value corresponds to 95 percentage of the confidence level. At this point of time, let's keep the default selection as it is. Click OK. After that, click on this graph tab and keep the default selection of display power curve as it is and then click OK. After that, click OK. So we can see we are getting the power curve for one sample t-test for various powers that we have mentioned. We can also see what are the assumptions here. Alpha is 0 0.05, standard deviation is 150 and alternative hypothesis is not equal to. We can see the power curve for different sample sizes here. If you hover the cursor over any of this power curve, we can see what is the relevant differences and power of the test. For example, if you see for the sample size 20, 
what is the differences and power that we can detect to detect the difference of minus 150 we are having the power of 98.85 percentage as we want to detect the lesser difference then power of the test is going to be reduced for example if you want to detect the difference of 10 then the power of the test will be 5.92 percentage in other words we can say we need to go for the higher sample size in this example let's talk about the same differences and power for the sample size of 23 in this example to detect the difference of minus 50 the power of test is higher which is 99.55 percentage and to detect the difference of 10 we can see the power has increased from 5 percentage to 6 percentage as we are going to increase the sample size from 23 to 26 we can see to detect the difference of minus 50 the power has increased from 99.5 to 99.8 percentage and to detect the same difference of 10 the power of the test is 6.23 percentage if we increase the sample size from 26 to 32 again we can see the power of the test is going to be increased to detect the same difference and that is also true if we increase the sample size from 32 to 44 so what is the conclusion from this as we are going to increase the sample size the power of the test is going to be increased and if you want to keep the power as same then at the same power we can detect the smaller differences this is the important relationship between the power sample size and the difference that we can detect we can also see that in other way let me explain that into the presentation let's talk about the specific power of 80 percentage and we can see the sample size which is indicated by this plain line that is a 20 dotted with the chocolatey line we can say it's a 23 green line is for the sample size of 26 this violet line indicates sample size of 32 and this gray line is indicate the sample size of 44 let's talk about the impact of sample size on the same power of 80 percentage we can see for the sample size of 20 for the power of 80 percentage we can detect the difference of 100 if we increase the sample size from 20 to 23 the difference that we can detect at the same power is going to be reduced if we continuously going to increase the sample size we can see at the same power the difference that we are going to detect is going to be reduced this is the very powerful relationship between power sample size and the difference that we are going to detect now let's see for the same example how we can calculate the power and sample size in sigma excel to start with copy this entire data from the mini tab to this microsoft excel after that we need to go for the sigma excel in that we need to select the statistical tools and after that we need to go for power and sample size calculator in power and sample size calculators we can see there is an option for one sample t-test calculator so select this option after that it is asking for what you are looking for or what you are solving for here the by default option is a power but we are interested in sample size so we need to select here as a sample size as we are going to solve this for the sample size we need to mention what is the power that we are looking for the power is 90 percentage so mention here as a 0.9 difference that we want to detect is the 100 standard deviation we can see in our example it was 150 and the significance level is 0 0.05 which is default alternative hypothesis is not equal to as a default and we are also looking for the not equal to so keep the default selection as it is and click ok once we click on ok so we will be getting the same sample size as of 26 that we got into the mini tab as well sample size cannot be in fractions so the sigma excel and mini tab as well as other statistical softwares also taking the next integer value in this example it is a 26 and that's why the actual power is somewhat more than the design power we have calculated this for the power of 0.9 but we got the sample size of 26 for the power of 90.42 percentage this is all about power and sample size and what is the impact of this power and sample size on the difference that we are going to detect i'm sure with the help of this practical example you got the complete clarity about this power and sample size let's learn another important concept into the next video at the end of this video if you found this information useful then please do not forget to like comment and subscribe if you want to learn Lean Six Sigma and Minitab most effectively and practically, then please visit at vijasabe.co/join or 
successfulcareerhub.com slash courses. One more important thing, if you want to support me or appreciate my efforts, you can also join my YouTube channel by clicking the join button at my YouTube channel. By joining this YouTube channel, you're not only supporting me, but also getting an access to the perks that can help you in your career goal. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.